welcome to our online Easter Vigil. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mystery, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we now bless our Easter candle. Christ today and yesterday, Christ beginning and end, the Alpha and Omega, all time begins with him. In all ages, to him be glory and power through every age, forever and ever. We have now lit the Easter candle. The Easter candle, candle symbolizes Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. Christians say Jesus is the light because becoming one of us in Christ, God has now given us a light to show us the way. We will use this Easter candle at every Mass through the next 50 days, from now through the Feast of Pentecost, and also at every baptism and funeral during the coming year. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. And we will now hear the exalted, a song which extols all the ways in which Christ is our light and Savior. As we listen to this song, may we look upon our Easter candle contemplating how Christ is the light for all peoples. Exalt, let them exalt the heavenly host of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation Sound out loud how mighty kings triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal king. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let the holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the people. Therefore, dearest friends, Standing in the awesome glory of this holy night, invoke with me, I ask you, the 
mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy, among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing his candles perfect praises. The Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just with heart and love of mind and heart with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, Wipe clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorpost of believers. This is the night when once you led your forebears, Israel's children, from slavery into Egypt, and made them pass dry shot through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now, throughout the world, sets Christians, believers, apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars from death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. Oh, wonder of your humble care for us. Oh, love, oh, charity beyond all telling to ransom us slaves. You gave away your son, O truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O truly blessed night, Worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written that night shall be as bright as day, dazzling in the night for me and full of gladness that sanctifying power of this night dispels the wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocent to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Heavenly Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of these and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise 
this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light, for it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. Oh, 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 truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those on earth, and divine human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you, that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets. Christ, your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed the peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these the last days has sent us his son as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. I invite all to extinguish their candles. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, 
and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made and found it very good. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except at the end of the ages, Christ our our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. 
do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, supreme Father of the faithful, who increased the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham, father of nations, as once you swore, grant we pray that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them through Christ our Lord. From the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, and you lift up your staff and, with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots, 
and charioteers, the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camp coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic. And he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore, and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Oh, thanks thanks be to God. God. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. 
chariot he has cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord's, and he has been my Savior. He is my God, I praise him. The God of my father, I extol him. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. The Lord is a warrior, Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and army he hurled into the sea. The elite of his officers were submerged in the Red Sea. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. The flood waters covered them, they sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, magnificent in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has shattered the enemy. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. You brought in the people you redeemed and planted them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place where you made your seat, O Lord, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Let us sing to the Lord, he has fallen and let us pray, O oh God, whose ancient wonders remained undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand. Now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit. A wife married in youth and then cast off, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you, but with great tenderness, I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath, for a moment I hid my face from you, but with enduring love, I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah should never again deluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord who has mercy on you. O oh, afflicted one, storm-battered and unconsoled, I lay your pavements in carnelians, and your foundations in sapphires. I will make your battlements rubies, your gates of carbuncles, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children 
shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In justice shall you be established, far from the fear of oppression, for destruction cannot come near you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you pledged to the patriarchs by reason of their faith and through sacred adoption. Increase the children of your promise so that uh, what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass, your church may now see in great part fulfilled through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty Come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without pain and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader, a commander of nations, so shall you 
summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way, and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from heaven the rain and snow come down, and do not return until they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of of the Lord. make known his deeds, proclaim how exalted is his name. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievements. Let this be Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for, not o for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I invite those at home and all to stand. We're going to sing the Gloria for the first time 
since the beginning of Lent. We'll also be ringing bells for the first time since the beginning of Lent. timing. Let us pray, O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be, be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ raised from the dead dies no more death no longer has power over him as to his death he died to sin once and for all as to his life he lives for god consequently you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for god in christ jesus the word of the lord
which I but live and declare the works of the Lord. Not so is the builders rejected as become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went, went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, happy Easter. Can't believe we can say that already. And I'm, uh, someone sent me an email and said, Father, look at the camera when you preach. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I, I tend to be a little bit slay and slave to my notes, but I'm going to keep trying. Uh, if I lose my place and I don't know what I'm doing, you know it's because I'm trying to look at the camera. Anyways, I'm hoping that tonight you all know the love of the Lord Jesus at this time. Some of us are cooped up alone. Some of us are cooped up with a small number of people. Some of us are cooped up with a small number of cats and dogs. But all of us are cooped up. I see uh, people at work, myself. We have a, a, a smaller number of people at work, but I'm actually kind of glad I can come and see people and talk to them. For my friends, I'm just talking on the phone a lot. I have one best friend, another priest, from Virginia who was gonna come to my house for three days after Easter and I was really looking forward to that but we both decided we better not he's a priest like me in a parish and we we're still seeing people so we canceled our get-together but about being cooped up reminds me of a cartoon that a staff member from our parish got from their nephew in Ohio and their nephew had a picture of two of his actual dogs, the dogs that are in his house up in Ohio. And so he made this cartoon out of the photo with like little cartoon captions like you'd have in a cartoon. And one dog was on top of the sofa sitting on a blanket and the other was sitting on the floor looking up at the dog on the blanket. And the nephew had put a cat caption like the cartoon for each dog. And the dog on top of the sofa was saying, sorry, but I can't share this blanket with you. And the dog on the floor was saying, I don't care about the blanket. I'm just wondering when all these people are going to leave. <laughs> so maybe our pets feel cooped up too, don't they? Especially our cats. 
but also for each one of us. I was reading an article about a woman who'd written about quarantine in her house with her little kids, and she, need, she said, I need to practice social distancing from my refrigerator. <laughs> and <laughs> I, agreed with, I agreed with that. I really, me personally, although I've been walking more, brothers and sisters, I walked, I keep seeing myself on live stream and it gets me going walking. <laughs> I've been walking, I walked four times in the last week, 30 minutes each day. Uh, I, I like to walk around the Episcopal Church up here. I think it's pretty grounds. Anyways, I'm Catholic though, by the way. Anyways, but back to the women's article she wrote also, I'm so excited, it's time to take out the garbage. What should I wear? <laughs> and then finally she said, after a number of days of homeschooling her kids, which she normally doesn't do, she said, my child just said, quote, I hope I don't have the same teacher next year. <laughs> and she, she wrote, I'm offended. So anyways, a few laughs this evening because, well, I think we need a laugh or two. But you know what else I need this Easter? I realize that more than ever, I need my faith, a sense of humor and my faith. These are the two things I am thinking about this evening. And maybe more than one of us is thinking about the importance of faith this Easter, especially now with all the troubles in the world, with the loss of the normal diversions in our busy culture and world, many of us are thinking about our faith. Father Francis Russo, who many people that attend Holy Family know is the Franciscan priest with the little white beard, who's been helping us out at Holy Family for about seven years now. And he mentioned to me, he called me on the phone, and he said he saw the other day on the local NBC News in Washington, D.C., they ran a segment about people, and the theme to their little uh, video segment was the old religious song, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. And behind the segment of just seeing people helping one another in Washington, D.C., behind they had he's got the whole world in his hands he's got the little bitty baby in his hands he's got a you and me brother in his hands he's got a you and me sister in his hands the local news ran this you know i don't think you would have seen that two months ago maybe i'm wrong i don't remember seeing overtly religious songs on the news or i mentioned at daily mass the other day that i got a call recently from a fella who had not been to Mass in years. He used to be very religious, but had not been to Mass in years. And guess what? All of this hoopla about online Masses, because a lot of the parishes are trying to do something, and all these online events, Rosary online, Stations of the Cross online, everything that's going on, he had reconnected with his faith because of this whole situation of everything being online. It made it so easy, he just started watching and he got hooked again. He said, he said, why did I stop doing this? He even called me on the phone. He said he wanted to talk to a, a priest about coming back to his faith. Or a parishioner said to me recently that they have a friend who is totally not religious, totally hasn't had any interest in, even sort of just a, a little bit anti-religious over the years. And so recently they said their friend told them, hey, I watched Mass and the Stations of the Cross online for the Holy Family website. And so this parishioner said to their friend, what has gotten into you? Are you the same person I've known all these years? And their friend, she just said, I just felt a need to watch. So this Easter, maybe we need a bit of a laugh, but I think we're also sensing we need our faith. And well, our faith is bolstered tonight when we hear the story that Deacon Moise read of people finding the tomb where Jesus had been laid on Good Friday empty. And one of the people who finds the empty tomb is Mary of Magdala, Mary Magdalene. She went to the tomb before dawn on Easter Sunday, not expecting to find an empty tomb, I don't think. She just went to be there. You know, why did she go before the light even came at dawn? Why go in the darkness to that old tomb? I would guess 
that maybe in her life not that many people had been kind to her. I just get that sense from scripture. One can assume she was looked down on by some. You might guess she was a person who had had a hard life, and I am guessing that to her joy and probably great surprise, Jesus had seen good in her and was kind to her and had given her hope in herself and hope in her ability to help others and had given her new, renewed faith. And don't you like to be around people who give you hope in this life? So I think that's what drew Mary Magdalene to the tomb before dawn on Easter morning. She just wanted to be around this person who had changed how she lived her life and given her new faith. But now she finds this empty tomb and runs to find Simon Peter, and they see that the burial cloths, they're not thrown about, but they're folded up neatly. And well, the good news is that Jesus, their friend, who was God, had overcome all the sin and death in this world and had risen from the dead. And because of the resurrection, Mary Magdalene and Peter would always know now that God had not stayed far away up in heaven while we suffered, like in the midst of this pandemic, but that God has come down here among us as he is with us if we're cooped up in our homes or we're worried about a loved one who has to work with people who are sick or maybe there's someone who is sick or even someone who has died that we know. If we're just worried about our financial livelihoods, if we're worried about our next paycheck, if we're worried about how we're gonna take care of things, I can't answer every question in the world, but I know God is with us and God loves us. And now with the resurrection, we know that God is more powerful than all the sin and death in this world. So now brothers and sisters, I can't answer every question why there's still wars and troubles long after the resurrection. I don't have all the answers for that, but I do know that when I was young, Maybe I was a little like St. Peter and St. Mary Magdalene, that maybe like Peter and Mary Magdalene, I too was looking for meaning in my life. I too was looking for hope. And so as a young person, I tried to figure out how to pray. And I went on a retreat in high school and I went to some youth group meetings at my church. And when I was in college, I sang in a music group at college and I volunteered. And when I got out of college, I joined a Bible study and went to daily mass and volunteered in my parish, all because I was looking for God, looking for God and looking for meaning and looking for hope. And I felt that there was something important about following Jesus and being part of a parish where the message of Jesus could form me over time to to be the person I wanted to be and to get to know the person of Jesus who I wanted to know. I was looking for something just like Mary Magdalene and Peter. And so just like them, I took a chance on faith and on Jesus. And you know, I am glad I gave it a try back when I was young because now I feel like Mary Magdalene and Peter at the empty tomb after they saw Jesus had risen, that I like them now know that God has not stayed far away up in heaven. And that now with the resurrection, God's love is more powerful than any sin and death in this world. But unlike Mary Magdalene and St. Peter, St. Mary Magdalene and St. Peter, I have come to know this even without directly seeing Jesus risen as they did. But through my experiences in the church that Jesus started and through good people through whom Jesus worked who were kind to me and helped me along the way, and through prayer and reading scripture and going to mass and confession, trying to live out my faith, trying to make it real by (coughs) challenging myself to help others so that I've come to a point, I certainly have a long way to go in terms of learning how to be a disciple, but I know it's all real and I know it's all true. And well, maybe there are a few other people watching online today who are more open to Jesus and faith because of this whole pandemic and the quarantine, because maybe we're bored with computer games and TV right now, 
because maybe we can't lose ourselves in a dizzy schedule that has us all the time running in circles, because maybe the bright lights have been pressing everyone at our jobs or our schools or teams or choirs or wherever are now dimmed, and we realize that in the end, those things are not the most important things in life. And well, for you, and I'm pointing to the camera, do you see my hand pointing at you? If you want, if you want hope and strength and something to believe in that will challenge you to value yourself and every other person on the planet, if you want to live a meaningful life that is about putting love of God and love of people first, then I'd say, take that chance tonight. And let's remember that we are following a faith that is real, that it all really happened. After all, something definitely happened to change that frightened group of disciples, all hiding to become bold apostles traveling from India to Spain, all proclaiming that Jesus had risen from the dead until all, of one, all but one of them had been put to death for preaching this. And that last one stayed in exile in jail basically the rest of his life. So Jesus is alive, brothers and sisters, and if you want more from life than school, sports, work, impressing others, making money, and then dying, well, I was competitive at doing my best as a young person, and even now, as an old fogey, I'm competitive, but I've realized, at least in the best part of myself that's slowly being converted, I, I realize it's not the most important thing to win or to have things, but that the message of Jesus Christ and his church are what are going to help you find meaning in life. So let's take that chance. Let's take that chance this Easter and start practicing our faith. At this time, we will have the choir members sing a litany of the saints, where they will ask the saints, saints name by saints name, to pray for us. We usually do this for the benefit of those who are becoming Catholic and being confirmed or confirmed and baptized at this Mass. And to all those who were to be joining the Church at this Mass, we love you, we're praying for you, we'll, we'll see you soon. But usually it's done for their benefit. Uh, that the saints would pray for them as they're joining the church and being baptized and confirmed. This year, though, we thought we would still, even though we're not doing those baptisms and confirmations, still have this litany because of the coronavirus, that we would like to have the prayers of the saints for you, watching online for all of us here at the church, for all those who are worried, for all those who are uh, feeling isolated, for all those who are sick. Uh, for all those who have to make tough decisions in our government and our church, that God would lift them up with the prayers of the saints who are the family of the Lord Jesus. So let's ask the saints now to pray for all of us, my brothers and sisters. St. Gregory, St. 
Now we're going to bless our holy water. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord, our God, to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us, that we may remain faithful to, spirit, to the Spirit whom we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people who keep vigil in this most sacred night, and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you have created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You have also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan. You have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. And brothers and sisters, in a moment, we're also going to profess our faith. We bless holy water, and we talk about our renewal of the vows of our faith, the beliefs of our faith at this Mass, and actually all through the Easter season, because we say the resurrection of Jesus is the core of our faith, the core of the faith into which we were baptized into. And so you might notice at Holy Family and a lot of churches from now until Pentecost, there's oftentimes a sprinkling of holy water during the beginning of Mass, which we don't do any other time of year. It's recalling the waters of baptism which brought us into the church, which brought us into this walk with Jesus. And the core of our baptism is the resurrection. That's why we talk about this at the Easter Vigil Mass and all through the Easter season, which lasts until Pentecost. We're now going to profess our faith again, the faith we were baptized into. We're remembering the core of our faith this Easter season. I'm going to ask some questions, and if you could respond, I do, if your faith allows you to do so. Just realize these questions, they date. 
from the year 325 AD, right after the Roman Empire legalized Christianity. The leaders of the church all got together in a place that's now in Turkey that used to be called Nicaea, and they call this the Nicene Creed. They have used these very same questions at baptisms since 325 AD, and it has turned into the profession of faith that we have said at every Sunday in Holy Day Mass, during Mass, since about the year 500 AD. So these 1,700-year-old questions are now asked of those at home and those here in our church. Would all please stand? And I ask all to respond. I do, again, to the following questions. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. God, the all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgiven all our sins. May he also keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And I'm now going to sprinkle water on everyone, and the choir is going to sing a song. Springs of water bless the Lord. Springs of water bless the Lord. Give him glory and praise forever. Give him glory and praise forever. Springs of water bless. Now, while I go get a towel, I'm going to invite um, our deacon to lead us in our prayers. On this most holy night, let us proclaim that Christ has had victory over sin and death. Please respond, Christ be our light. For the church, may we understand the great love the Lord has for us through the cross, and may we have hope in the Lord's ability to help us overcome obstacles through the resurrection. We pray, Christ be our light. For the nations of the world, that there be peace and justice for all people, we pray, Christ be our light. For all those who are affected by the current pandemic, either through illness, worries about a loved one, worries about possible exposure due to their job, economic difficulties, isolation, or because of separation from their faith community and the sacraments. May God give us strength at this time, we pray. Christ, Christ be, be our light. light. For all those who were, had, were to have been baptized or confirmed into our church this Easter, and for those young people who were to have received their first communion this month, that they may continue to grow in faith during this time, we pray. Christ, Christ, Christ be, be our light. For all those who have never practiced any faith or pra have practiced another faith, or have been away from the Catholic Church. Welcome to our online Mass at Holy Family. Perhaps this is the first time you have been able to experience the Catholic faith ever, or in a long time. We invite you to come to Holy Family in the future when we are able and able to continue to pray with and, and continue to pray with us online until that time. We pray. Christ be our light. That all the sick be lifted up by the love and care of those around them. We remember all those who are prayed for in our oratory 
through the prayer network and in the bulletin, we pray. Christ, Christ be our light. For the departed whose lifelong vigil for the Lord has ended, may they live forever in Christ. We remember Loretta Cam Campoli in a special way at this Mass. And for all those who have died in the past week, especially Cataldo Seminara, uncle of Mary Deemer, we pray. Christ, Christ be our light. For those prayers we offer in the silence in silence, but lift up to the Lord. We pray. Christ, Christ be our light. And we ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord. at home to stand for the traditional incensation of the congregation of this Mass as we have incensed the bread and wine which will become the body and blood of Christ at this Mass. We've also incensed those on the altar to remember they are signs of God's presence tonight. And so also this is traditional to incense the entire congregation, brothers and sisters, to remember that we are all the body of Christ, that Christ dwells in you on this night. And then we ask all at home to stand. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what was begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty 
and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope and William, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith, remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your beloved son our lord jesus christ on the day before he was to suffer he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you O god his almighty father giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more we're giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. With humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son. May we be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us you also, your servants who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ, Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, you fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us stand and pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And 
we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that uh, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Offer each other in whatever way we can the peace of Christ. On you stay, we call My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not, not worthy, worthy that you should that enter under my, my roof. So I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I'm going to read a prayer, an act of spiritual communion by St. Alphonsus Liguri. And if you would like to just invite Jesus into your heart at this moment. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
And let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love and your kindness. Make those you have nourished by this Paschal, Paschal Sacrament one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before our final blessing, just a uh, couple of announcements. First of all, we will be having events online. Nothing Easter Monday, actually, uh, but Tuesday through Friday, and then the following weeks, Monday through Friday, uh, 9 a.m. services, but nothing Easter Monday morning. There'll be nothing that day. Uh, but other events, too, we're going to have rosaries, um, Divine Mercy Chaplet, just so you know, next Sunday the 19th, there is a Mass tomorrow, the 12th, at 915, a little bit shorter than this one. Uh, another Easter Mass, but also on the 19th of April, we're having a Divine Mercy celebration at 2.30 online, of course, uh, with the Divine Mercy Chaplet and some songs and readings. But other events are being planned, too. We're kind of working on uh, trying to have occasional events for you all and a little bit of a, a talk here and there. I've been trying to get some parishioners to put together talks because I'm sure you're getting tired of seeing me, uh, but we're working on that. So we just want to continue this sort of online experience, which is not everything it could be, but in a funny kind of way, we might be reaching more people than normal, which is also good. So until we can come together, also tonight, as of tonight, because there's been people um, asking about it, my window, the little adoration window in my office, which is the wing of the church closest to the old chapel, it's part of the church complex, but it's closest wing to the old chapel, we will have Jesus back there in a monstrance after this. Uh, or when I'm, no one's here, there's a little mini tabernacle there, and he'll be back. He's been back tonight. So uh, thanks again to Mr. Brown and the members of our choir so, who sang so beautifully. <laughs> As a, it was stunning, really. Stunning, I thought. And then our wonderful lectors, wonderful deacons, and uh, we're just real, real uh, happy uh, to be with you here tonight. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Please, please respond, amen. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit 
to the feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen.